everybody, it's Larry's Country Diner. We're gonna have a good time today. We, uh, we got a, uh, I just pay no attention to the peanut gallery there. <laughs> got a Hall of Famer here today. Oh, we're gonna have fun. I wanna introduce a man now who, he is so out of touch that he keeps throwing paper wads at me. No, he thinks video games are still TV game shows on TV. His favorite's The Price is Right. Here's Larry! They're not? No. No. No, they're, they're Gee, little, little things you can play. I didn't know that. Yeah. Here's, here's something you didn't know either. What? It isn't pollution that's harming the environment. It's the impurities in our air and water that are doing it. Oh, I've heard about that. You know who, stayed, who said that? I have no idea. Al Gore, when he was vice president. I can, somehow I can believe that. I, I'm not... <laughs> I mean, that goes back. Yeah. <clears throat> Politicians have always said some Silly thing. Silly. <laughs> silly. <laughs> silly. <laughs> to say the least. On both sides. <laughs> hey, Renee, I, I want to take just a moment. I keep meaning to do this. You know, house burned down, all the clothes burned up, and she did a rush order on my Larry's Your Country Diner down. shirt. Yeah, no, send your money to Renee. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> but she did a great job getting this done. I mean, she even had it dry clean, brought it in today. I didn't have to do anything but make a phone call. Thank you, Renee. You're welcome. I know how helpless you always I are, know. Keith. I know. <laughs> and I was going to change it to Keith's Country Diner and hope nobody noticed it. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been funny. <laughs> I didn't have time to be funny. No, <laughs> We no. had to be serious on this one. <laughs> had to get it quick. That's All right. right. Time for the promise from my bread of life here. Yes. I wonder if this is rye bread. I'm just glad you don't lick your fingers anymore before you take one. Out. See? Ugh. They're good. My dog loves them. <laughs> First John 5, 14. He will listen to us whenever we ask him for anything in line with his will. Wow. Now that's the sneaky mm -hmm. turn in the middle of that. If it's in his will, he'll answer anything. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, Isaiah 58, 11. I like the promises. I do too. Does that right. mean if we're close enough to him, we already know what his will is? Well, I had a professor in college one time. He said, I pray, God, I want to do your will. And if I don't want to do your will, make me willing to do your will. Oh, that's good. And I thought, oh, boy. <laughs> that, that sounds a little bit like the guy I know that, that does whites out the verses in the Bible that he doesn't like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I found a better way to do this. How's that? You go to, um, uh, to a yard sale uh -huh. and find a Bible that's already been underlined and, and marked up and everything. Yeah. You buy that, take it home, put it on your, on your library table. Yeah. People think, whoa, that guy really reads. He's really <laughs> studying here, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, what? What are you pointing at? The that's Bill that Anderson. That. Have you met Bill? The shirt with the Bill, that's colors. Joe Case. Known Joe for 120 years. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Joe? Good. Let's get a song out of you, Bill Anderson. Well, thank you, Larry Black. Yes, it's fun sir, to be really. with you. Thank you for... Well, Invite me back to the diner. It's been a while. You were on the very first one we ever did some 13 years ago. And your show survived in spite of that. Yeah. <laughs> you knew who else was on that first 13 series? Larry Gatlin. Who? Larry Gatlin. Who's that? That's what I said. Who's to blame? I'm thinking of who's to blame. Larry who's Gatlin. To blame, you know? Sat <laughs> next to him, right behind him last night at your, uh, your big doings, which was an awful lot of fun. You also introduced Mo Pitney to our audience and brought him to the diner. Mo oh. Pitney, remember? Yes. Mm-hmm. It was You've with done your regular label. Mm -hmm. Well, you're very kind. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't get a diner shirt, and I couldn't make up my mind what color shirt to wear today. <laughs> so. Well, let's just change right here on TV. <laughs> uh, is it my turn? Yes, sir. Yeah. Reed. All right, brother Ben, hang with me. 
I'd rather live a life of lies and fantasy Than face the truth and realize you're leaving me You built me up so high My heart can't stand the fall And life without your love Just isn't life at all So walk out backwards If you must go And please don't wave goodbye Just wave one last hello The truth won't hurt so much If I can just pretend So walk out backwards And I'll think you're walking in You walked into my heart In search of sympathy From that day down to this You've walked all over me And now you're walking out To love somebody new But you're not by yourself Cause my heart's leaving too So walk out backwards If you must go And please don't wave goodbye Just weave one last hello The truth won't hurt so much If I can just pretend So walk out backwards And I'll think you're walking in Just walk out backwards And I'll think you're walking in Yeah! Yeah! You write the songs. I wrote that one. Was and it? And I've been just... ashamed of it for all these no. years. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the viewers of the diner are used to seeing and hearing Tia Goins do that. Yeah. And she looks and sings a lot better than I do, but <laughs> I did write the song. What? The hook line came first? Mm -hmm. That's what I started with. Well, got back. So you're wanting to know where I got that yeah. idea from. Well, Thank you for finishing my question. I was fairly question. newly married, <laughs> and my wife and I were living in a little tiny apartment over on the west end side of Nashville. We were up on the second floor in this, this house, two apartments upstairs, and we had one. And the guy across the hall's name was Bill Anderson, which is another story. <laughs> uh, boy, did we confuse that landlord. Oh, no kid. <laughs> he went on to become a very famous, well-known, and successful doctor in Nashville. But uh, in this little apartment, we were upstairs, and the way you took your trash out, or your garbage out, is you went down almost like a little fire escape outside. It was a metal staircase, and right. you'd go down, and the trash cans were down on the ground. So I'm sitting at the kitchen table one day, and just, just minding my own business, and I looked up, and I saw my wife. She had a bag of, of garbage trash in each hand, and she was kind of bumping up against the door with her backside to try to get the door open so she could go out with the garbage. And I looked up, and I thought just this instant that she was bringing the garbage in the house. <laughs> and I'm thinking, why is she bringing garbage in the house? And she said, well, I'm not. I'm taking it out. I'm just walking out backwards. I said, oh, I thought you were walking in. Ah. <laughs> Next wow. thing I knew, I wrote a song. <laughs> That is super. I love that. That just proves that songs can come from anywhere, and I probably should have thrown that one in the garbage. No, 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 no. <laughs> Let's get out of here. We'll be right back. Oh, I think I'll write that down. Let's get out of here, and we'll be right back. Okay, I got a song. We'll be back. Oh, wow. Two pieces just for me? Just right for no. you, Key. Just, oh, I got to share it? Oh. Yeah. Oh, there's Larry, by the way. Excuse me. <laughs> Give me my pie. <laughs> you want a fork, too? You want to eat with your fingers? Huh? I can eat it with my fingers. <laughs> Actually, I'll use my mouth. <laughs> Bill Anderson. Yes, sir. Great songwriter. Thank you. Great whisperer. 
Thank you. I like that Vince Gill called his answering machine. First time I ever called Vince Gill. I was trying to set up a writing appointment with him. I was scared to death because <laughs> Vince Gill at that time was the most popular artist just about in the world in country music. And somebody had told me to call him that, uh, that he would be willing to write a song with me. So I was kind of scared to call him. I thought, I've been around here since dirt, you know, and Vince is fairly new in town. He probably won't even know who I am. <laughs> That's what I thought until I dialed his number and I got his answering machine. And I thought I was going to be talking to Vince, but instead I heard this voice. Hi, this is Whispering Gill. <laughs> I said, not only does he know who I am, he's stealing my act. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that was an honor. I told oh, him later, I said, just the fact that you knew who I was and, and you were impersonating me on your machine, I was, I was honored. I was with you one day at uh, the... Italian restaurant down Amerigos. on Amerigos. We had had our breakfast. We were walking out, and there were four guys sitting at a table over here. One of them was bald, sitting against the window. As we walked by, he looked up and he said, Bill. And you said, Garth. <laughs> <laughs> it was the day after they had done the thing in New York City in the, in the park where they had just 100,000 folk out yeah, there. Yeah, I remember that. And uh, he had a question for you and uh, recognized you and saw you. And that's Nashville. Wow. Yeah. It's a pretty special place. It is. Give us another song. Oh, okay. Since you're talking about me being a songwriter, I'm going to sing one I didn't write. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever know Shel Silverstein? Oh, I yeah. am a great fan of Shel Silverstein. What an amazing man. He could write anything from children's books yeah. to articles in Playboy magazine and songs in between. I always liked this one. And we got a good-looking group in here in the diner today, so I want y'all to help me with this. And Larry, you can jump in, and Renee and Keith and everybody. Uh, this has got that little sing-along chorus to it that uh, a lot of you probably know. Some of you might even know the gyrations that go with it because it was kind of a little dance type thing that kind of went with this. There was a group called the Irish Rovers that had the big hit on it, but I always thought that it was kind of a country song at heart, so I made a country record on it. It's a song all about a bunch of animals and a very special animal called the... A long time ago when the earth was green why, there was more kind of animals than you've ever seen. And they just ran around free while the earth was being born. And the loveliest star was the unicorn. There were green alligators and long neck geese, some humpty back camels and some chimpanzees, some cats and rats and elephants, but sure as you're born, the loveliest of all was the unicorn. Now God seen some sinning, and it gave him pain. And he cried, stand back, because I'm going to make it rain. He said, hey, brother Noah, I'll tell you what you do. You build me a floating zoo. Sing now. I want some green alligators and long neck geese, some humpty back camels and some chimpanzees, some cats and rats and elephants, but sure as you're born, don't you forget my unicorn. sing better than that. Green alligators, long neck geese, humpty back camels, and chimpanzees. I'll do the rest of it. Y'all just do that. Somebody said the other day, Larry, said Noah was the bravest man in the world. He got on a wooden boat with two termites. Well, old Noah was there to answer the call. And he finished up making the ark just as the rain started to fall. And he marched in the animals, two by two, and he called out as they went through. Hey, Lord, I got your green alligators and long neck geese, some humpty back camels and some chimpanzees, some cats and rats and elephants, but Lord, I'm so forlorn, I just don't see no unicorn. Then the 
I looked out through the driving rain And those unicorns were hiding, playing silly little games They were kicking on the splashing while the rain was pouring Oh, those silly old unicorns We got green alligators and long neckies Some humpty back camels and some chimpanzees Some cats and rats and elephants But Lord, I'm so forlorn We just can't wait on the unicorn Well, the ark started moving And it drifted with the tide and those unicorns looked up from the rocks and they cried But the rain just kept on falling and kinda floated them away And ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls and Larry Black and Keith Bilbrey and Renee and everybody That's why you've never seen a unicorn to this very day You'll see green alligators and long neckies some humpty back camels and some chimpanzees Some cats and rats and elephants But sure as you're born You're never gonna see no unicorn Yeah! <laughs> Thank you, Ben! <laughs> wow. Thank you. you knew the words to it. You were singing. He wrote The Winner for Bobby Bear. Yes, mm -hmm. he did. He wrote a whole bunch Boy of Boy Named great, Sue. Boy, now that one, yeah. yeah, I do know that. Yeah, Bear to, did an entire album of nothing but Shel Silverstein do you, songs. Bill, you may remember this. Back years ago, after the Opry on Saturday night, everybody would gather at the Pancake Man over on West End at the yeah. Holiday. Shell was always over there. And I was over there with Captain Midnight, and I would just sit there and hang on every word Shell mm, would. Yeah. He had stories from everywhere. Yeah. Did you ever go to a like a guitar pull where a bunch of writers and all were together passing the guitar around and singing. I've, I've heard of that. I'm pretty bad a lot of times. Shel Silverstein was the worst I ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty he, bad singer. He, I don't know how people ever sometimes realized how good his songs yeah. were yeah. because his presentation was was pretty bad. But he knew it, and he laughed about it. And I, I asked, Tom, talented T. Man I asked Tom T. Hall about that one. I said... Now, you guys go and, and pass the guitar around and do your songs. Weren't you afraid somebody would steal one? He said, well, Keith, back then, you know, you had a hit song. You bought a Cadillac. Now you buy a dealership. You're a little more careful. <laughs> 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 Nadine, is she on her way? Boy, it smells good. Mm-mm. Oh, out. no. Woo! Here she comes. Hey, lady. How, How you are doing? You? I'm doing good. <laughs> I am, apart from being physically exhausted, financially challenged, and overweight and mentally unstable, it's hunky-dory. <laughs> <laughs> How y'all doing? Good. Good to have you, Mr. Bill. Good to see you, Nadine. Good to see you, too. I'm just glad to be above ground. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some days. <laughs> uh, I gotta tell y'all, I, I need to, I gotta hurry this up because I, I may have to get out of here pretty quick. Um, Why? Well, it's, I, I got some things I need to do. Um, but I gotta tell you, my, my nephew Earl came by last yeah. night and um, I, he, uh, I gotta tell you, he, he's so smart. Uh, he went over to the telephone company with two other guys and uh, they're wanting to be technicians at the local phone company and they, um, the boss told me, he said, well, I want you to, I'm going to do a test for you, and then I want you to, we'll find out tomorrow which one I'm going to hire. So he said, okay. So he, they went out, he said, I want you to go out and set as many telephone poles as you can set. So he said, all right. They went out, and they came back the next day, and the manager said, how many did you set today? And this one guy said, I set 13 poles. He said, wow, man, that's good. Asked number two what he did. He said, well, I set nine. He said, well, not as good, but man, that's still good. My nephew, they asked him how much he did. He said, well, it's not my nephew, it's Homer's. Mm. <laughs> um, he said, I set two. He said, two, what in the heck have you been doing all day? He said, well, I don't want to be a snitch, but those other two, they only put theirs halfway in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, it's my nephew. 
No matter how low you lower the bar of expectation, some people manage to roll right under it. <laughs> yep. I, he, he's single. He's been married about eight times, I think. I asked him the other day, I said, are you dating anybody? He said, I am single as a dollar and not looking for change. <laughs> <laughs> I told him, I said, well, if you could line up all your exes in a row, maybe you could uh, see the flow chart of your mental illness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was a, he's good. He, he came from a fine line of lunatics. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to go on over and set, set the sign up. Oh, set the sign up? I'm going to set the sign up. Yeah, it fell down last night. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I got to get somebody to go over there and put it up for me. <laughs> we had a straight line win last night. <laughs> it's going to say, sometimes God doesn't change your situation because he's trying to change your heart. Uh-oh. It is good. These are all for me. <laughs> yep. Bill, I see you brought that cute friend of yours with you. To my Keith Bilbrey. Uh, it's about time for your eye exam, isn't it? <laughs> and you know just the person that can do that, too, yeah. don't you? Let's take a quick break and get out of here. How do I get in the middle of all this? I just sit here. I don't bother anybody. We'll be right back. Country Diner, I just noticed on the menu today, we got the Bill Anderson special. It's a Peel Me a Nanner Banana Pudding. Oh, boy. So good, you'll have to write a song about it. Peel Me a Nanner, Toss, toss Me, me a Peanut. Peanut. There's Larry. I'll come Climbing swinging from a coconut, coconut tree. tree. One of my favorites. You like Peel Me a Nanner better I, than I Walk Out it. Backwards? Well, it's, it's pretty <laughs> even there. <laughs> you got away with words, Bill. Well, <laughs> I got away with those. <laughs> <laughs> got a song for us, Bill? Can I do a brand new one? Oh, sure. Yeah. I have not done this in public before. I just recorded it. Owen Bradley, who was my record producer and who produced Loretta Lynn and Conway Twitty and so many people on Decca Records and MCA Records, he had a great saying that I kind of have adopted over the years. Owen used to say when, when we'd be in making a record and maybe some of the musicians would try to be playing a little too fancy or maybe we'd be pushing the envelope a little bit, he'd get on that intercom and he'd say, boys, Baskin Robbins has 31 flavors of ice cream and vanilla still outsells them all. Oh, wow. And that was his way of saying keep it simple or as solemn old judge used to say, keep it close to the ground, boys. Ben, get me a little rhythm going over here. You know, sometimes when we're writing songs, we kind of try to be too clever. Sometimes we have to remember that vanilla still outsells them all. This is a very simple song, and I, I had to work hard to keep it simple. Sometimes writing simple is harder than trying to write complicated. The earth is round. Stars are bright, the night is dark, the day is light. There's just some things we know are true, and all of me loves all of you. Deserts dry. One plus one adds up to two. And all of me loves all of you. The way you hold. Never 
never had a feeling anywhere in the whole wide world quite like this. The sun is gold, the sky is blue. The way you hold me, the way you kiss There's never been a feeling anywhere in the whole wide world Quite like this The sun is gold, the sky is blue The sun is gold, the sky is blue, and all of me loves all of you. That's super. Mm, good you. stuff. I'm sorry? Don't be. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear you in here. I have to unplug this to hear you. <laughs> I get unplugged a lot. <laughs> I was thinking of the, um, the comedian that used to say, here's your sign. It was, how stupid can you be? Or something like, here's your sign. Mm -hmm. Couldn't find my luggage at the airport area. Went to the lost luggage office and reported the loss. Woman there smiled and told me not to worry because she was a trained professional and I was in good hands. Now, she asked me, has your plane arrived yet? <laughs> there you go. Welcome back to Larry's Country Night. Why, why, why do I have this tray full of... Well, take it out, Keith. Oh, okay. Hey, there's Larry. Walk out backwards. Walk <laughs> backwards, Renee. Walk out backwards, Renee. Would you mind telling me, doctor, he asked how to detect a mental deficiency in somebody who appears to be completely normal? Yeah. Nothing is easier, he replied. You ask a simple question, which anyone should have no, answer, no trouble answering. If the person hesitates, that puts you on the right track. What sort of a question, he asked. Well, you might say, Captain Cook made three trips around the world and died during one of them. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> Number two. <laughs> he thought a minute and then he said with a nervous laugh, you wouldn't happen to have another example, would you? I, I, I got to confess, I don't know much about history. <laughs> Bill Anderson. <laughs> Good to have you with us. <laughs> Always great to be here, Larry. Thank you so much. Appreciate, yes, the, appreciate the invitation. Back in March of 2020, I was on the very first Grand Ole Opry show that played to an empty auditorium. Mm. Nobody was there because of COVID, and it was very frightening and very unusual. Somebody asked me later, said, how did it feel to be up there and not see anybody in the audience? I said, well, I've been playing to empty auditoriums for 50 years. I mean, what's new about that? Don't beg you. <laughs> but I sang this song, and I hadn't recorded it. I had just helped to write it a few weeks before, and it seemed to kind of fit the occasion at the time. And since I have found that this fits a lot of occasions, Keith, I don't want to bring you down or or get into anything. I know that you've, you've been through so much, you and Emmett Joe. I think this song may, 
may speak to you. I All think, right, I think I'll just speak excuse myself now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we try to we try to figure out why things happen sometimes. Yep. And I think sometimes we just need to sit back and remember that someday it'll all make sense. I stared at the heavens, my heart full of anger, so mad I was shaking. When out of the darkness A voice soft and tender Said someday It'll all make sense Right now I've got questions Without any answers My faith is out there riding But I've got to believe in what I can't see. Someday it'll all make sense. Someday the picture will come into focus and we'll see it all plain. When we come together In the place he has for us Where the pain and the hurt disappear Someday we'll laugh at These roads that we've traveled I am completely That hope never dies Or goes out of fashion Someday it'll all make sense Someday the picture Will come into focus and we'll see it all plain and clear When we come together In the place he has for us Where the hurt and the pain disappear Someday we'll laugh at These roads that we've traveled I am completely convinced That hope never dies Or goes out of fashion Someday it'll all make sense Someday it'll all Someday it'll all make sense. Can wow. I tell you something? Yes. I just recorded that as a duet with Dolly Parton. Oh, yeah. wow. I am, uh, yeah. I am extremely excited. Dolly was going to be here today, but she was busy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Someday but that'll all make she sense. She sang so beautifully. Oh, she and does What a that. thrill it was. I think this song kind of touched her like it does me. Yeah. Good enough. Thank you. Oh, I can just Boy, hear her voice on thanks that. Thanks for being here. Thank mm. you for having me. Thank you, Ben Hall. Thank you, Larry. Mr. Anderson. Thank you, Ben. Great job, buddy. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Black. <laughs> <laughs> are you yeah. not the Reverend Mr. Black? Are you? Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, I well, recorded it, that song one time. Exactly. Years ago. Really? Yeah. He was tall and lean and not, I, he that. Was, I see, he was, uh, yeah, now if you hadn't asked me, I could have told you. <laughs> he was tall and lean and it, he was, 
He rode tall in the saddle. He was tall and mean. At first you thought nothing but a streak of mean could make a man look so downright right. strong. But one look in his eye and you know you was wrong. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. We're out of here. Bye, Larry. Bye, Keith. <laughs> Good night, John boy. Larry's Country Diner where the cameras are always rolling and we don't care. care. Yeah, baby.